First you will need wood slices. Unfortunately, this one that I ordered from Amazon cracked after I applied gesso, so I wouldn't recommend them. I found a person in my town who makes wood slices and they were great. Let's talk a little bit about the process, how I prepare uh, the wood for my ornaments. And by the way, you can find the links to the materials in the description. I'm using a Mod Podge to seal the edges. It looks white right now, but once it's dry, it will be completely transparent and invisible. Then I wipe the dust and prepare the surfaces for applying the gesso. And this step helps the wood to accept the core ground. If you worried about discoloration, you could use two coats of Golden Gak 100 or Polymer Medium Gloss and let fully dry before applying the core ground. For mediums application, I'm just using the old brush and I'm just trying to go carefully around the circles and make sure my edges more or less clean. After just applied, I let it fully dry and then I apply two coats of a watercolor ground. Let your watercolor ground dry for at least 24 hours and you're ready to start painting. My circle is fully dry and I just use a sandpaper to make the surface really smooth. You don't have to do it, but my surface was a little bit too rough for me, so I decided to sand it. And today we are going to paint a gray jay bird and this is the bird who can survive cold Canadian winters and it's also super curious and friendly. First we will need some references. So I collected the pictures from the internet, there is photos, uh, there is uh, some paintings of the birds for my inspiration and I put all the references inside my notes. It's actually really convenient because you can have all your references in one place and you can go back and forth while you're uh, painting. First I'm going to plan my composition, I'm using the pencil to do it and I'm going to find where the bird will be and maybe some branches and some direction. It's not going to be anything too detailed but I just want to make sure that everything in the right places. When you draw the bird just simplify shapes, it's just circles and ovals and everything is super simple, don't make it too complicated. Just do this uh, two simple shapes and then add a tail and some wings and your bird is pretty much ready. And now I just need to add some branches here and there and I think that looks good for my composition. The only one thing I need to check is the actual and that's probably a good idea to do it in the beginning. So make sure that once you hang your ornament it's in the right direction and it's not upside down or something like that. For the brush, I'm using cheap synthetic brush and the reason is that watercolor ground is a rough surface and if you use a good brush it will be destroyed really fast. So don't use your expensive brushes for this project. And for the paint, I'm just using my watercolor uh, paints and uh, this is Daniel Smith. I have uh, lots of different colors but I'll tell you which colors I use during the process. So I'm going to start with Conacridon Sienna. The first layer is going to be really light, so I use lots of water and um, less pigment while I'm doing this first wash. Working on the watercolor ground is not the same like working on the paper and you will definitely notice it. But it is a great surface to work on and the big bonus is lifting the colors. It's much easier than from traditional watercolor paper. That means that uh, you can actually correct your mistakes while you're working on this surface. The first layer is done and now I want to decide what will be lighter or what will be darker. So the bird will be darker and the background lighter or the bird will be lighter and we have a dark background. I think I prefer the bird be darker so I'm going to start and darken some areas to create that contrast. I'm just grabbing my dark mix of a little bit of brown, a little bit of Payant's gray and I'm just going to find the shape of his head his eye and the rest of the body. The main idea here is to create a contrast, get uh, the viewer attention to the focal point and contrast is one of the tools we can use for that. And even though this dark color looks just gray and the main color I'm using is Payant's gray 
for this mix. I'm still changing it a little bit and make it warmer or cooler by adding lavender or Cunacridon Sienna. Just adjust your color a little bit and it will, always, it will um, make it more interesting than just painting with one color. Here I'm starting to add some details. His beak, his tail, his eye, just define some elements and then at the last layer I will add more details and uh, just make sure everything in the right position. Sometimes paint moving on surfaces like this will have to correct it a little bit at the end, but like I already said, it's easy to correct watercolors on watercolor ground. So here I'm creating a negative shape for bird's belly. So in this particular area, the background will be darker than the bird. And that's how we usually show our whites or light um, objects and watercolor is by creating negative shapes around. Now I want to add a little bit warm color on his body. And after that, let's darken some areas and define the shapes even more. Like I said, the paint is moving a little bit, so we always have to go back and correct it just a tiny little bit. And while we're doing this, we also can add some details for the wings, for the tail. Just look carefully on your photo references and you'll be able to see where you want those darks. Okay, now let's touch the branches a little bit. I'm keeping a snow on top of the branches and uh, I'm just darkening the bottom part. And I'm again trying to play with the color and make it warmer or cooler. And after we found our branches, let's add some color to create negative shape for the snow. I'm using still the same colors, lavender, uh, Cunacridon Sienna, Payan's Gray, just mixes of them and uh, playing with warmer and cooler shades. Okay, here is Cobalt Teal, one of my favorite colors. I'm just doing this little touch and you can see how this color add interest to the painting and to this main subject. And let's add some tiny little branches for the details in the background. Okay, and now just a tiny little bit of correction, darkening some areas where it needs to be darkened. Maybe you want some edges to be softer and some harder. So this is the time. This is the time when you want to change all those little things. This part is not necessarily, but if you want, you could use a white gouache, or this is actually a watercolor, but opaque watercolor, and just work a little bit for those white little areas that you might lose. This is where I want to switch to my good brush to be able to complete with this little details. so dark today outside but anyways here is my ornament and it is complete so now i'm going to go outside and spray it with the protection for my spray i'm using this golden archival varnish and that's what i'm going to spray right now i'm doing it outside as it still has a pretty strong smell so i wouldn't do it inside let's shake it really good and we are going to spray it. Usually I do two or three coats. Uh, so once the first one is dry, I will apply one more. One more ornament to my collection and I hope I inspired you to make your own. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like and I see you next time. Have a wonderful day!